I'm Claire MacArthur. Here's an overview of research with my collaborators on foraging strategies. Animals that eat plants, whether they eat leaves or fruits, all confront the daily dilemma of what to eat and where, without themselves being eaten. Plants defend themselves with thorns and spines, or with toxins that inhibit feeding. Toxin concentration changes as leaves age and as fruit ripens. Plant eaters also face the problem of predators, and the risk or fear of being eaten constrains where and when they forage. We asked the question then, how do plant eaters forage in this landscape of food and fear, and in particular, how do they balance the costs of plant toxins and predation risk? We studied the nocturnal thick-tailed bush baby in scrub forest in southern Africa. These are small, fruit-eating primates that are vulnerable on the ground to leopards and hyena. We placed food in safe feeders in trees and in risky feeders on the ground. We titrated toxin against fear by varying toxin level in the trees, yet keeping the ground feeders toxin-free. The giving up density, or GUD, quantified the relative cost of each feeder. Bush babies often fed in groups, but they also fed alone, and they were alone more often on the ground than in the tree. Bush babies were vigilant at feeders, and they were more often alert and alarmed on the ground than in the trees. Consistent with this behaviour, the GUD was higher on the ground when all food was toxin free. The ground GUD remained unchanged, but the cost of toxin pivoted around the cost of fear as gut increased in tree feeders as toxin in these feeders increased. The equivalence point where toxin equals fear occurred where the guds were equal. We conclude that the effectiveness of plant toxin as defence against plant eaters such as bush babies depends not only on its concentration in food, but also on how risky the environment is. A corollary is that plants can benefit from fear as a substitute for their own defence. This adds a new dimension to the concept of indirect plant defence but it's one over which the plant has very little control.